Okay, for today's project, boys and girls, we have <laughs> we have a 2004 Ford F250 rust bucket with a flatbed. Today we're going to be installing. Well, we're going to try to install. Never done it, so we're going to try it. Watch a few videos on YouTube of people that have caravans and uh, they put these in there. I guess in the Europe, these are used a lot. What this is is the cheapest Chinese version of a parking water heater and what this is is basically uh, for you rednecks out there you got a salamander heater out in your garage this is like a tiny salamander heater that has a burn chamber it takes in diesel fuel uh, heats up the water in this cavity I believe around that you have an intake and exhaust or exhaust and intake I don't know yet and you put this in line with your your vehicles uh, water lines or coolant lines and what this does is through the controller you can preset set a certain time of day which I don't know because um, as you might notice some of this is in Chinese writing so I don't know this is a wireless remote for it you got this on the dash unit which on the dash but it's got a damn antenna so I don't know how we're gonna run that from on the dash all the way out of the truck to put this antenna on so you can use the wireless remote or it says your cell phone but I don't think it's set up for uh, the states for cell phone but anyway preset this uh, it kicks on at whatever time you preset it and heats up if I remember right the it heats up your coolant in your vehicle up to like 160 degrees and uh, then you come out and I, well, I paid quite a bit for this, but people say, why not use a block heater? I have a block heater. The thing is, I go to work, and I never know if I'm going to be there for 8 hours or for 16 hours. And if you had a 6 liter power stroke, you know the injectors, they like to stick. And if it's negative 15 out, and I'm at work for 16 hours, uh, I like to have something, because I can't plug my truck in at work. And this is going to stop with the coolant heated up. It's going to stop a lot of the, uh, the injector from sticking and that horrible knock it makes when it starts up. Um, so at home I'll probably use my block here, but when I'm leaving work or maybe in the morning I might set this to come on before I, I get up about 5 in the morning and go to work. So Anyway, so we got the main unit. We've got a, a nice assortment of, of Chinese fittings. I haven't opened this bag yet because I don't want the bird flu. Uh, we got this here. You got to plumb it into your tank, which I ran this truck almost... God, I'm lucky I didn't run out of fuel. It's so low. Brackets them out. You got an antenna for the outside for the wireless. You got its own little fuel pump, which is kind of cool. It's even got its own muffler. Wireless remote. Uh, some various connections that aren't explained because I read the manual. And most of it's horrible translation between it looks like Chinese and American. doesn't make much sense. So figuring out how to program this is going to be a real chore. It looks like uh, some real fine wiring harness here, intake, and uh, air filter for the intake built into this. Here's your exhaust pipe. A uh, nice enough display with some the finest Chinese rubber hose they've got, and some uh, plastic fuel line, which I hope this is enough. And a water separator for the fuel, which is kind of interesting. I didn't think this would come with it, but that's pretty cool. And a water circulation pump. So this will come on with the unit and circulate the coolant through it and through this while your truck's just sitting without the engine running, which is, I think that's pretty cool. So you can actually park the truck if you're waiting outside, say, waiting outside of school or you had something, some event where you had to stay out a long period of time. Hell, you could even sleep in the truck, turn this on, and from what I'm reading online, this thing will burn about a gallon of diesel in an eight-hour period, which isn't too bad to keep your truck warm without it running and putting uh, hours on your engine. But that's what's on the agenda today. I gotta drop the fuel tank in this and uh, I'm not gonna record all that because if you can't drop a fuel tank maybe you shouldn't tackle this project. And uh, here we go we'll just... Oh yeah by the way I got one of these on Amazon. This thing's been a blast. I would recommend these in a heartbeat. You stick them onto the outside of a someone's car went on the passenger side and they go to get in this is what they see and uh, you can just stick it on any window stick it on a house 
but yeah I would recommend that if you like Halloween I can't remember what it's called but it's on Amazon look up uh, creepy peeper and you can get one of these it was like 34 bucks and it's been well worth it. I've got my wife 19 20 times I got a really good friend with it and uh, yeah I didn't think he was going to talk to me after that but all right, I'll get on the project. I'll try to do uh, some video as I install. I'm going to try to do a video as I install this into the fuel tank. If you try to tap into the fuel line, you could possibly, when the truck's running, it could possibly draw, pull a suction on on the, uh, the main unit here, and you might get air in your fuel. So I'm going to go ahead and do the recommendations and actually drill a hole into the plastic fuel tank. And this has got underneath this little screw here, it's got a... Uh, rubber o-ring to seal it. I'm going to use what they actually spun. I'm going to try to do this as close as they say inside of this uh, this wonderful wonderful nice menu that it really once you try to read it it doesn't even flow or make sense a lot of it does but all right now we're going to try to get it done okay so get the gas tank out uh, I ran this almost completely. I mean, we we're probably on fumes pulling into the garage. So I'm pretty much only done with the tank. Uh, it's very, I would really recommend running as low as possible. You have your fuel sending unit, wiring and plugs, uh, two fuel uh, wires right here, and filler neck. I have a flat bed, yours will be different if you have a standard bed get these off it's fairly easy because I have a flatbed um, have a vent tube right here and also you have one right here which get some light on this I'm pretty lucky that I did decide to do this because look at this thing and the one going over the truck is the same the exact same way it's just I mean looks like I just did a burnout over here this thing's gone probably wasn't connected it's probably getting water in my tank but this one and this one that goes up here was the same way now these lines on the vehicle uh, I don't know I haven't been mechanic or done mechanic work since uh, 2004 but Ford's like to use these lines and for this you need a special tool I bought this probably back in 2000 I got raped really good by Mac Tools on this. You can get these now at AutoZone or uh, hell even um, Harbor Freight. But this is a nice Mac set. Probably paid quite a bit. I can't remember. But what you do with these tools is Fords have fittings on there, and I don't have one here where you can see it. But you take these, you stick them on, and almost like the the modern day shark bite fittings you get at the uh, at your home improvement store for plumbing it's kind of like what these are it has a, a little I don't know if you call it a ferrule but a, a, a flare in the flange there it goes over and it clicks over the top of this this tool goes in and pushes it up and you just push it back and it slides over that is what holds it on but this allows the teeth to release uh, they come in different sizes. This is obviously this one is for this size. This one's usually for Ford transmissions, but in this case, it fit perfectly over to get it to slide those off. And of course, the wiring harness is no big deal. But these sets come in handy. You have one that's uh, you can use for you know tighter tighter areas where that long one won't get you to it. Transmission lines, this is good for that. But you can get these uh, pretty cheap nowadays. Back then, when I bought these, they were fairly new and it was another specialty tool you had to buy to do transmission services and a lot of other lines, fuel fuel fillers. But we got the pump, uh, we got the tank out. I'm going to clean this off and uh, open this up. I'm going to take a look and see how dirty it is. I'm going to have to find some rubber hose to complete this back to the body or to the frame. And I'm going to drill a hole probably somewhere maybe in here to run this. And I'll probably have to either bend it a little bit or trim it. It's going to fit right down inside the tank. 
Okay, so I went ahead and got the appropriate drill bit, drilled the right size, I have my hand inside. I'm going to drill it so I can catch the shavings. Uh, this is going to be, this tube was a little too long. So what I did is I gave it a little bend to the back. It says in the manual you should keep it up off the floor of the tank. So you don't suck anything off the floor of the tank, which I'm going to do that. Uh, I need to bend just a little bit more, but I want to angle to the back of the tank because it drops down. Because most of your inertia when you drive throws the gas to the back of the tank. So I'm going to bend that just a little bit more so it doesn't touch the bottom. And I'm going to put this nut on the back side from inside the tank. Screw her down, put the sending unit back in, and the tank's going back in the truck. Alright, so here's the deal. Um, I watched one of the videos on YouTube, and a guy has a, uh, it looks like an F250, 3, 4, 550, whatever it is. And he's got, um, I think he's got fiberglass fenders on the front, or possibly more of like a Raptor style fender, something that flares out more, uh, more than the stock fender. But I liked where he mounted his. So, uh, just for shits and giggles, I went ahead and I mounted it right here just to see if it would clear. And right there in that position, I've got the, that eh, shouldn't really be a big deal. I'll have this back and see antenna wire goes up. And I'll uh, find a better way to hook it. But, I put the fender on there and it does, it does go over it. And guys, this is a, uh, this is a truck is about to end of its life. Uh, it's hard to tell, but cab corners are bad. The hole underneath of the truck's bad. It's just a rust bucket. These are actually different fenders, hood, grill, everything on this truck. So I'm not so much worried about keeping this thing looking nice per se, as much as I want to keep it running so I can keep using it. But I think I'm going to mount it right here. I'm going to run the hoses up, probably go through this with a hole saw, and come over and connect into the feed for my uh, uh, poop sorry I can't think of the words feed for my uh, heater core inside and so it pumps in line with that and feeds it back into the engine and everything like the pump and everything should mount nicely up here on the up here on the firewall but yep it actually fits in there so if you buy one I believe this is just a Chinese clone uh, it should should work out pretty good all right, so this bracket, the top, the rabbit ears top, the bottom did look the same way, but where I'm going to mount it, uh, the body line, I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of dark in here, body line goes in, so therefore, I bent the bottom tabs in, oh, there's no light, anyway, I bent the bottom tabs in, so you would go under and reach the bottom side, so I have a mounting bracket, and I just cut a piece of uh, angle iron real quick and drilled some holes for self tappers that's what this kit comes with and that's how we're going to mount it solidly all right so what we've done is I've take I've actually swapped this around the other direction I ran the exhaust pipe in off of the inner fender well liner and down along that flat metal piece there you know I mounted the muffler down there aiming out the ground the air uh, Bracket's breather tube comes down, drill a couple holes, put zip ties through the inner fender liner to hold it, and then it's going to sit right there. I showed you the bracket, how I, uh, I moved the bracket, or I bent the bracket and made a, a small angle iron adjustment there. Comes up. I just took a plasma cutter and cut a hole in the fender through both sides. I took a piece of uh, rubber hose and just split it in half. I'm using it as a grommet. So I don't rub a hole in these lines and these clamps are actually the only thing touching it. The hoses aren't touching it. So it comes up and the other one's going to come through the same one. And it's going to run over and connect to the feed line for the, uh, for the end cab heat right here. This comes directly from the water pump until, until the thermostat opens. This is the only thing pumping fluid through it. And it goes right into your cab for your heat through your radiator core. Or heater core sorry so on this side what I did was it comes with a fuel pump so this is going to go over here to this it's going to feed this pump kicks on kicks it out that direction it's going to go down to the heater down to the heater come up and then I'm going to tie 
back into back into this right here and I still have the fuel pumped amount but on this it pretty much worked out pretty good because it's got this rubber grommet that comes with it yeah it's not needs turned a little bit more to line up but that's fine and I just had to drill a hole through my fender here and put a bolt uh, actually yeah a screw and a, a, a nut on the bottom and a lock washer and then I'll be able to hook this up and run the wiring inside so as for the power wires will be here, the pump will be here. The only one I'm going to have to run a, a decently long wire for is going to be the fuel pump in the back. And this fuel pump here is a YG19-3212. And I'm looking and there's no arrows for direction of flow on this. So I guess we'll have to, I got a few pumps anyway, I've got some extra pumps, electric, electrical pumps, they're low pressure. I'll have to put on the line, plug it up and see how it goes and see if it actually, which way it pumps. But I'll do another video when it gets a little closer to being done. All right, so I got everything about done <clears throat> and uh, I should have really paid attention better. Because if you look across the degas bottle, uh, right back here, is almost just at the same height as these hoses. So therefore, I can leave the return hose this high. That's no problem. But the hose with the pump needs to go down and get as low as I can underneath the degas bottle. So I'll be able to leave this one where it goes, which is fine because it'll eventually push the water and push the air through. But this one, I'm getting a little bit of suction having the pump where it's at. It's uh, cavitated the pump and then this thing isn't functioning. <clears throat> I've got this where it comes on, heats up great, heats up so hot you can hear it bubbling, boiling the water because I'm not getting the water flow I should be getting through there. So whew, I'm going to take the pump side, somehow run it down here with the pump low and we'll get it figured out that way. Okay, so scratch what we said pre previously in the video. Um, I ran my return line up and over. It's pretty loose in here. I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, it's going to chafe. It's going to chafe. It probably will, but I'm not going to be driving this truck that awful much. Um, I used a 90 degree bend in the hose kit that came up under here, came down low, low, low. Came into the pump, the pump spins and goes out that direction and uh, I had to put this lower because I wasn't getting, I was getting air up here and lower, it's a lot lower than the reservoir, the reservoir full, the pump's working good, put some extra electrical tape around that just to cover it and if you install some truck, you're not going to want to do this but uh, this is my vehicle, this thing, it, this is like the very least of the rust. The doors, the whole bottom's all rusted out. This truck's on borrowed time. Went ahead and plasma cut a big section out here to run the the hoses, and down here in the bottom to run the pump inside here, and left it mounted here, plumbed like it was before. But the uh, return line, feed line, return line, return line goes up over across underneath into your heater core then it goes out to the heater core back to the other side of the block so your engine is always feeding this when it starts up even cold it'll feed this to get some warmth in the truck first so the kit also came with another small wire that'll just have um, it's got ones that have a fuse and a relay on it and it's got this that just had two bare wires and it didn't say where they're supposed to go but I looked and it said it went to your heater your heater box is what it says so I, I wired these in they're spliced in with my power wire going down here to my blower motor and uh, I made sure I ran the system I, I made sure they're not powered all the time and they once it hits a certain temperature these two wires become powered and now it will kick my blower motor on inside the truck after the engine gets to a certain temperature it kicks my blower motor on it heats the cab up also 
and this will be off when I'm driving down the road, but when it's uh, started in the morning, that's kind of a nice thing to have. It'll, it'll kick out on, just blow some warm air in there and get it warmer in the cab. And then, of course, your two thicker wires uh, are positive and negative for the battery. And these are the ones with the relay, and uh, uh, it's got a fuse on it. I left those a little long, and just at times, got the fuse where it's easily accessible. The relays are tucked down in here because of the distance of the wiring harness to the pump. But uh, we're going to see if we can fit the fender on and uh, had to do a little modification of the exhaust. It was a little too close to this and started to burn it. So I plasma cut a hole right here in the side of the sheet metal. And I put a band clamp around that to pull it up tight against that. And there's another wire here I'm going to have to, to clean up a little bit. But the controller goes in. I put a small hole in this, uh, this door, this grommet for the door. Ran the controller up in from the bottom through into the cab. And once you're in the cab, you got to reach up through. That's horrible. Reach up around your heater box and you can pull it. And now the remote is actually into the cab. And I'm going to take and I'm going to run it up under the dash on that side. Now it also has a antenna. And I think the antenna after I run it might end up coming out of the driver's side door pillar up over there. So that's that. So we tested it. We found out it was a little too close to this uh, plastic up under here. So we got that taken care of so it's not going to catch fire. Uh, ran it. Got it nice and hot. The Filled the coolant back up. Now we just got to clear all this up quick beginning of this video if you're watching this to learn how to install one of these uh, with Bosto you could probably buy theirs this is a Chinese clone this one came from Drive World D-R-I-V-W-O-R-L-D on Amazon they also have a storefront and it's a Chinese one as you can see uh, I bought it on Amazon the company won't return anything any emails when I got it I was missing two of the screws so this cap wasn't sealing which is allowing the blower motor to blow out here and I thought that was the reason it was probably uh, filling with carbon because it wasn't getting enough air blown through it so contact the company never heard back from them I went through their Facebook site their Facebook page Amazon and the company's website and they won't return anything or even talk about maybe possibly fixing anything so Bought some new screws, tried to put some silicone on the edges around that fan to seal it up, seal up this housing, still, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a, an eighth of an inch or so of carbon that's only been run twice. Once I sealed the housing it worked better, but for some reason it's still, uh, the fan's not putting out enough it seems like. So I went ahead and I bought, because this wonderful company wouldn't send me any uh, any more information by the way their their instructions for their controller is horrible I've had three different people two engineers one mechanic look at it and um, they couldn't figure it out so either the instructions are not right or the controller does not have the functions they say and the company won't get back with you so you're I guess shit out of luck so I'm going to go ahead and pull this apart and see if I can't put a new um, a new glow plug, glow plug or whatever igniters, pretty much glow plug is what it is, in here and see if that makes a difference. But in this video you'll see the whole installation of this into a Ford F-250, mine's a 2004 but it's the same I think, believe up to like 2009 maybe. And this is what I did. But do not buy from Drive World on Amazon on the website they're selling something like eyelashes now fake eyelashes so I don't think they even care about any of this stuff they want all the fake eyelashes so good luck and enjoy the video all right here's running it twice I completely cleaned it out it's kind of hard to tell exactly how much soot's in this thing but that should be after like a year of running This thing is just completely full, all the way down the fins. So hopefully, 
put a decent glow plug in this and it might make a difference but yeah this is just it's ridiculous the whole thing is just coated insides coated outsides coated it's all just coated and I've never I've always shut it down but it shut itself down I've never unplugged the power from it so in case someone might say that just either I'm hoping I'm really hoping that glow plug is just garbage or weak the one that came with it but we'll see and I'll make it a video at the end I'll add it to the end after I get this all cleaned out and by the way this is some nasty shit you get this on your hands and you have calluses or anything it sticks in there and you cannot get it out but alright guys I mean, look at that alright guys I'll make a video when I'm done cleaning it this is after it's all the way fired up that was just pre-starting it this is how loud it is almost sounds like a blow dryer on low setting you can hear it ramping up a little bit it's actually blowing pretty clean now we got the uh, glow plug and take that muffler off it's got a nice flow through it so that pretty much wraps up this uh, wiring this thing in you can hear the pump clicking it's not too loud See if you can get a little shot of that here. I actually can't hear it too well over here. But that's not bad. This truck is straight piped. And idling, it's way louder than this thing will be. So, result, not really in result. I still have to mount this box up here. All the problems I had with this thing, I had to order a new glow plug. And because this company won't respond to anything, I had to order a Wabasto, Wabasto, glow plug which fit but didn't quite fit but it got running here's the remote comes with yep that's right you read the middle to me tell me what that says but anyway this is uh, the wireless remote it works further than most people's vehicles uh, wireless remote at work uh, pretty far distance I can start I can start the heater where they can't even uh, get their lights to flash in their car but all right So we got on, timer, and error. Error's never even done anything, never come on, even when this thing starts blowing out black smoke before I replace the glow plug. And I had to take off the muffler. I found that with the muffler on, it would not work correctly. There's almost like it restricted it too much. You got the time. You got what it's set for to come on the morning, 4.30 in the morning for 40 minutes at 90 degrees Celsius and the alarm on so you can hold the on off button for three seconds and it fires it up that way too or on the remote three seconds power on sends out to the vehicle, comes back says it's off. Uh, you can go through and check the temperature and everything. To turn on with this, the center button, Chinese button, hold for three seconds. It tells it to start firing on. Right now it says it's freezing in Celsius, zero degrees in Celsius. No, it's 19 degrees Celsius. Probably won't be able to hear it even with the muffler off it's fairly quiet you can hear a hum behind that fender it's already sorry for the light it's already kicked on the pump start pumping coolant through and I'm gonna have to change this it's got a provision where it'll kick on your fan and it doesn't seem to do as well once the fan kicks on it almost draws power down from the unit and causes it to smoke more so I bought a 
I guess a temperature gauge slash uh, relay controller. I'm gonna run inside the truck and uh, use that. Fairly quiet. It's worked pretty good the last few days. I come out and the truck's got some heat in it, nothing great. 